Hello and welcome to a new episode of Tech Talks. As technology advances, its role in business operation continues to increase. Bahwan Cybertech Group has been driving digital transformation of businesses across the globe through its technologies. To talk more on this topic, we welcome Mr. Vish Srinivasan, the Executive Vice President of Bahwan Cybertech Group. Hello, Mr. Vish. Uh, hello, Cynthia. Thank you so much for having me on the show. So can you tell us, please, about the services and digital transformation provided by BCT? Uh, yes, BCT, uh, before I go into the digital transformation side of BCT, let me just give you a little bit of history about you know where we started and how we came about. Uh, BCT was founded in 1999. This is the 25th year of our operations. Right from the onset, uh, the company was formed to be a global organization out of the Middle East, right? So we started in Oman, India, and the U.S. right about the same time. Very focused on building intellectual property products and, you know, also looking at delivering solutions using, uh, you know, technology that exists like Oracle, IBM, uh, and many other technologies out there. Mm -hmm. So fast forward now, we are a $300 million organization, drive digital transformation. We operate out of uh, 20 countries with about, uh, you know, 4,000 people that actually work for us. The services that we offer can be classified as digital and enterprise. Enterprise services includes uh, things like Maximo or any other uh, e enterprise resource planning type solutions that we actually offer into the market. And all of the new age digital technologies, uh, including uh, UI UX or uh, cloud native solutions that we actually offer. So, so what types of IP products can BCT provide? So at the heart of all of what we do, uh, our intellectual property products rolls on top of data. So we look at sense, analyze, predict, and you know drive business outcomes. Mm -hmm. So uh, across industry verticals. So for example, in the financial services industry, we've got a product called RT360 that pretty much looks at early warning systems. Like for example, this product is used in financial crime mitigation. Uh, you know, we're doing a sandbox with the Reserve Bank of India. Drop Thought is a product for customer experience management that we picked up. Uh, you know, that, that's a product that we acquired from Stanford, and that looks at real-time feedback analytics on customer experience. Mm -hmm. Retina 360 looks at asset management uh, for sense, analyze, and respond. We've got a patent on that product. And Fuel Trans looks at downstream automation. So our products are kind of diverse, but as I said, at the heart of what we do is sense and deliver business outcomes to our end customers. So interesting. Now, how can BCT keep data secure? Data security is not something that we take lightly, right? whether it's our internal data or whether it's the data of our customers. And the way we look at data security is looking at encryption, uh, looking at data backup, recovery, and all, all of the allied uh, functions that actually goes with it. We have a specific function, a CISO and his office, that actually functions uh, looking at internal and external data for us. And there are lots of regulations around data today, right? There's GDPR, there's CCPA. And that's very, very important. But what we also think is very, very critical is the training that we actually uh, give to our employees who handle sensitive data of our customers. Mm -hmm. So there's always an ongoing training program, whether it's internal or we look at uh, you know, external uh, customer-facing data that, that we have. So data is at the heart of what we do business with, and we are very, very uh, specific about how secure the data is. How does it contribute to the ecosystem through cloud-native solutions? So cloud has been a buzzword, right? In the in 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 the in, in in the last few years. So we've got we work with large enterprise clients here, right, from Emirates Airlines to Adia to Etihad, and and a whole lot of customers across uh, across the region. Mm -hmm. Many of our customers are obviously moving their solutions onto the cloud. There are still some solutions on prem. We have a very specific program that we've devised. It's called Cloud Path. It starts with what is known as a cloud assessment, just to get in there and understand the business impact of the solutions that actually need to move to the cloud in the first place, and how do you move them, right? Whether it is through a microservices architecture of you know rebuilding that entire thing, or looking at wrapping them around using containerization or looking at serverless computing. So we've got a complete end-to-end -end solution around cloud migration, and these are services that we offer to our uh, customers across the globe, and very specifically in the region as well. Okay, now let's talk about the MENA region. Can you tell us more about the BCT services provided for governments in the Middle East region? So MENA is our home, right? So this is pretty much where, where we were initially started and then we kind of uh, you know, grew, grew our branches uh, right across. 
So we work across eight industry verticals, uh, oil and gas, government, financial services, healthcare, retail, uh, and, and, and a few other sectors as well. So within the MENA region, again, you know, the world usually looks at the Middle East or the MENA region as one big landmass, right? It's like, it's not. There are many countries, and yeah. each of those countries have a very specific culture of buying behavior. So for example, uh, if you take UAE, you know, the, the buying behavior is very, very different. The kind of services that we offer here are fairly cutting edge. Uh, you know, we are at the bleeding edge of technology as far as UAE is concerned. There are other parts of the world where, uh, you know, we do legacy modernization, like uh, in, in, in countries like Oman or Jordan mm -hmm. or Bahrain. Uh, so the plethora of services that BCT offers, we are very strongly present in the region. We service about 206 customers in the region across uh, almost all of the countries in GCC and the wider MENA region as well. Okay, can you tell us now about the services provided uh, by BCT to the education sector and uh, also to the ad tech services? So education has been extremely important for us as a vertical right from where we start. And if I just take a look at the MENA region itself, right, so uh, almost two decades back or well beyond that, people have been talking about moving away from oil uh, in terms of diversification of the economy, right? So knowledge-based economy was something that everybody were focusing on. So from an education perspective, way back in 1999, we started with the Oman government, where till date we've trained over 27,000 young Omanis to be what we call gainfully employed. So the outcome is very important in the education business, right? And as we had progressed over the many years, we started an edtech division, which predominantly looks at how digital transformation can help the uh, education segment. And there, uh, we have coined uh, that division as called as a lifelong learning solution, which means it's K-12 to higher education to occasional and all the way up to uh, you know corporate training that we offer. In the K-12 space, we've got a couple of products that we work with. And we have built a platform that helps schools here, like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, look at how do you choose edtech products. And we've invested in a company that looks at social and emotional learning. I think it's a very important aspect of yeah, the especially education. especially now that the education sector is based on the digital platforms. Absolutely. And it was very important at all times. But, you know, post-COVID, it's kind of really taken a lot of uh, yeah. this thing on the emotional and the mental well-being of children. So we very consciously invested in a, in a, in a company that does game-based development for young children. Uh, in order to learn social and emotional skills, right, which is a very important part of character building. Uh, we have worked with Repton schools here in the UAE, and very recently we are on a project with the Dubai police around cyber uh, bullying. So it's a very interesting project, so we will take it to market very, very soon. Uh, so edtech education, we continue to invest, Part very important part of our portfolio. Just a couple of days back, we signed a large uh, memorandum of understanding with the uh, Ministry of Higher Education in Oman, where we'll be offering services. We're signing one with a, a country in Asia to completely transform their vocational training. So it's an interesting space. And yes, it's at the heart of what we do. Now regarding the challenges, what are the challenges that BCT is facing today and how can you overcome them? Look, challenges, uh, if I were to take the Middle East region, right, Middle East, North Africa region, I, I, let me put it this way. This is more uh, opportunities for us than actually challenges, right? I mean, they, there are lots of legacy applications in this part of the world. There is a lot of sh shortage of skills, right? Uh, in many places, you actually find shortage of skills. And if you really compare it to the global market, uh, the risk-taking appetite, again, I'll go back to the very fundamental of saying that Middle East is not one big landmass. Each country has got different levels of maturity. Uh, so, for example, the, the, the risk-taking appetite. Now, parking all of this aside, just look at the opportunity in the Middle East, mm -hmm. right? Governments are investing heavily in digital transformation. Exactly. An extremely important uh, census that came about is the average population age is 22, mm -hmm. right? You're really looking at a digital native society here that's going to embrace technology and also work on the cutting edge of technology. So the opportunities are huge, and the governments continue to invest. So we, we gain out of that and uh, would love to be part of more such programs uh, in the region. So what's your opinion regarding now the digital transformation in business sectors in the Middle East region? So digital transformation, our industry, right, in the IT industry, we overuse and we terminologies, right? So digital transformation is one of the most overused uh, piece of, uh, you know, it's a word, buzzword yeah, around. it's a big name. It's a big uh, name, right? Not all digital programs are transformative, but no yeah. transformation program can actually happen without digital footprint, right? So that's that's the way it is. Yeah. The way I see it is, uh, and, and the way most industry sees this is, 
digital transformation is not an IT initiative sitting in one corner of an enterprise, right? Mm -hmm. Digital transformation is an initiative where the brand or the enterprise looks at the customer or their consumer, if it's a government, their citizen, right? At the heart of how they want to d digitally enable themselves. If you see any brand, for example, just take a bank, for example, they will, or any brand, right? They will always go out in the marketing messages, holdings, billboards. They really talk about saying customer is important, customer is king, and I'm going to, you know, put everything in the customer at the, at the beginning of that. Now, take two steps back and go back to the enterprise and see if the digital footprint matches that story, right? Yeah. Which is called what we call as the frictionless customer journey. When you walk into a bank, when you deal with a bank, you have six products with the bank, a credit card, a car loan, a home loan, whatever. Is your experience seamless and how can that happen? That can happen through digital. So digital transformation is a business-driven initiative supported by the IT. So it's very, very important to understand the end outcome of what you are trying to do and trace it back to the digital programs that you'll put together to achieve that outcome. Can you give us now an overview about your latest partnership with Access Communications? Uh, we are f firstly, I think we, we thank the management of Access Communications uh, for the partnership. It's a very interesting partnership where it's, it's very synergistic in, in nature uh, because we do a lot of work around border surveillance. We do a lot of work around automatic number plate recognition, facial recognition. And we also work on the data side of this, right? So we have data analytics platforms. We've got microservices architecture that fits very well into the scheme of things. Access is extremely strong in the hardware and the infrastructure that's required for, for this program. So we are engaging on very specific projects uh, in, in the region. And we're also building together uh, an intellectual property that is uh, around intelligent traffic management system, for example, as one of many that we will build together, which will bring in the IoT, the uh, devices, along with the data analytics platform, offering a very solid solution uh, into the market. Yeah, that's. What are your plans for the next few years? So we will continue to invest in technology uh, that's growing, right? Whether it is uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, data sciences, uh, we will continue to invest in building skills around those. Talent is very, very important. Talent is not about how much of talent you have, it's how relevant the talent is, right? So it's either reskilling or upskilling our existing employees or looking at more employees coming in. But investment into future technologies, uh, being able to predict and invest in them is pretty much where we see the organization growing. We are growing at about 40% CAGR, uh, fairly reasonable growth clip for us. I hope we continue to grow at that pace or maybe even just make it that better. Mr. Vish Srinivasan, the Executive Vice President of Bahwan Cyber Tech Group, thank you for being with us today. Thank you so much, Cynthia. Thanks for having me. Pleasure. To another episode of Tech Talks, goodbye.